Bayan Mara is a Social Impact Senior Manager at Carbon Ethics Foundation. Based in Indonesia, she has a keen interest in sustainable tourism and dreams of a solid collaboration amongst all stakeholders to take real climate actions for our Earth and our communities. Thank you so much, Maurice and everyone, and try for inviting me for uh, this opportunity. I'm very happy to be here um, to discuss uh, and share ideas and also experiences um, in this webinar. Um, so, yeah, my name is Vian Mara. I'm from Indonesia, and um, I'm the former senior manager for social impact in Carbonetics Foundation Indonesia, as mentioned by Maurice. So, our organization is an NGO that focusing on um, community-based blue carbon conservation. Our work um, consists ranging from mangrove restoration, coral um, rehabilitation, and um, etc. So um, yeah, and also maybe I wanna share a bit. Also, Julie, your presentation is awesome. Um, as mentioned by Maurice, uh, my organization itself consists with a lot of youth. I believe like 95% of us is actually it. So it's um, amazing, you know, to have that idea on how to um, put more efforts to um, develop, uh, professionally develop um, the theme within a small business or organization. And while my topic here uh, for the second topic in the webinar, I'm going to discuss more about SDG 8. So it's similar with the Julie already mentioned, but I'm also going to discuss a bit about SDG 4, which is called education. And um, since my background in the organization focusing more about um, conservation, restoration, so here I would like to discuss about um, nature-based solutions. So how nature-based solutions or NBS can help us to achieve the targets of SDG 8. Um, and also a disclaimer, I'm not an expert, I'm not a researcher. Um, also, I mean, I don't have like um, years, years of experience in this topic. So I'm hoping um, we can discuss with an open mind and also yeah, just share ideas and also experiences. Okay. So you already mentioned about the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic. We can truly um, see about um, the impacts, especially for the economic consequences. Like I'm talking about generally, we have lost um, 20, uh, sorry, 250 million full-time jobs and also 1.6 billion informal economy workers were significantly uh, affected. While in the topic of youth, um, we have the increase um, in youth that is not employed due to the pandemic or either they're not in school and also in training because of the situation. And I'm not gonna go deeper into this topic since Julie already mentioned about the focus of recent work and economic growth. And more into this um, challenges of SDG 8 employment economy. So to go more deeper about what's the background of SDG 8 itself, so first of all, I believe like the one of the biggest challenge of uh, employment and also economy is uh, livelihoods. Since livelihoods is um, severely impacted by weather and also it's very vulnerable due to um, shocks, trends, and also seasons. So and all of those can severely impact it, um, the local community's ability to earn money. And also um, the challenge of SDG is that. Um, equality and also women empowerment, since you know the goals of the SDG eight means also including all men and women with equal uh, pay for work of equal value, including those uh, that are um, less able. And related to education, also I mean child labor is still um, quite a heavy homework that we have to take all together, since you know child labor also. Uh, create negative impacts that can limit uh, the education of the child and also um, can lead to vulnerability and also poor job prospects for the individual and also for the community as a whole. And last but not least, I believe um, it closely connected with livelihood, which is the challenge is conservation. Since someone's livelihood or a community's livelihood cannot be sustainable if we don't um, preserve or um, protect the natural resource space, especially to those who are um, heavily rely on nature um, for their livelihoods. So yeah, I believe all of these challenges is actually interconnected. And uh, in this opportunity, I would like to more um, put a solutions, integrated solutions that can answer all of these challenges. 
So um, the maybe the two key takeaways that based on the background that I just present before is that um, one, the, the impacts of COVID-19 um, pandemic that impacted our economy. And also the second part is that the importance for us to um, create a sustainable, decent work because the livelihood itself or, or the nature itself is very vulnerable due to the climate crisis. So then um, jumping into point number three, based on those two important um, background that um, now multilateral development banks and also governments recognize that this moment um, for COVID-19 is an opportunity, like perfect momentum for us to tackle the climate crisis and also in the same time to build a higher societal resilience through the nature itself that we have. And um, from there, then we can connect it with nature-based solutions or yeah, maybe I'm gonna more say NPS. So NPS often um, it costs more effective uh, to you know, promote um, jobs or employment since it has low investment and also um, can uh, promise uh, sustainable results for the jobs itself. And yeah, so the NPS itself can help to create employment while also simultaneously protecting the nature, mitigating climate change, and also making human society safer, healthier, and more resilient. So um, to conclude that from this slide is that this is a perfect opportunity for us to use um, green recovery approach to tackle the challenge of pandemic COVID-19. So uh, taking a look more about the data behind the green recovery, first of all, in the figures on the left is that uh, we can see the correlation between the abundance of population compared to the species monitored across the globe. And unfortunately, it has declined very significant uh, for the last um, 40 years. So it's starting, uh, the range is from 1970 to 2016 is that it has declined for 68%, which uh, we can assume from that um, the biodiversity in our planet has um, decreased. And from the figures on the right, um, we can see the proportion between uh, during the recovery, economic recovery, so between the non-green and also green recovery, while it has um, increased over the um, month for the green recovery, those um, it's the proportion between the non-green and green is still quite small, which is um, 80%, I believe, um, the, the, uh, the, yeah, the contribution for the re green recovery or the total recovery spending uh, by countries all over the world. Well, um, actually, uh, the biggest um, green recovery spending budget is um, being used or spent by South Korea, Spain, and also Germany. Uh, yeah, so a bit uh, more about nature based solutions. Um, again, I'm not an expert. Maybe um, if any of the participants are also actively in nature based solutions, you can also chat in the box so we can also discuss further. So in general, NPS are actions to protect, sustainably manage, and also restore the natural ecosystems uh, surround us. And so it's not only the environmental impact that NPS is actually emphasizing on, but it's also providing uh, hum uh, human well-being and also sustainable livelihoods. And if we see from the lens or from the perspective of socioeconomic impacts, so NPS itself um, can help uh, to support decent work and also sustain productive natural capital and assets. So yeah, as, as mentioned before, NBS uh, in many cases, is, uh, it it's only requires a low cost investment for boosting jobs, productivity, and also economic activity. So uh, with that, I can say it's kind of a win-win solution for us. And uh, more interconnection between economic recovery and nature-based solutions. Um, again, I want to very stress the you know, connections between um, economic activities and also biodiversity and natural resources. So a lot of, um, especially in my country, Indonesia, 70% of my um, communities are heavily relying on nature since we are one of the biggest archipelago countries. So yeah, ecosystems such, there's trio ecosystems or marine ecosystems have provide 
employment and plays a very critical and big role, um, especially in my country, like agriculture, forestry, fisheries, and etc. And based on the data that I also um, see is that half of the world's GDP is actually depending on nature, especially for those countries um, of our low income countries, I mean, sorry, that actually natural capital accounted for for 30% of the total weight of those countries. So again, it's very important uh, for us to protect the nature to also protect um, the livelihoods of our communities. Um, so how can nature-based solutions help solve the un unemployment problem? So these are the um, scheme, the framework that NB has have, how it can help to tackle a lot of um, actual SDGs and also societal challenges that we have uh, in the communities. And on the left is just like some examples on how nature based solutions can help to solve un unemployment problems. So these are just um, yeah, to name a few. So, for example, small and medium sized enterprises, as also uh, mentioned by Julie, and actually during the um, implementation of NBS, um, usually projects, there is a lot of initiatives and also um, movements within the community to create small businesses like um, yeah, agroforestry or fisheries. And um, also as mentioned by Julie, SMEs play a very critical role in job creation where you know, it's the source of innovation and also creativity from the um, community itself. And the second part is community-based tourism where you know, it definitely supports the local livelihoods and bring empowerment to local. So not only economically, but also bring education um, and then um, yeah, the communities can have the benefits of the tourism itself. And women empowerment, of course, it supports a sustainable development and as not least, it's sustainable livelihoods. Since, I, I, as I mentioned before, it's um, very important to protect the nature in order to protect the livelihoods. And also, sorry, last but not least, is education, where, um, you know, by um, having projects like nature based solutions, it must have, you know, um, what is it? Um, yeah, include the communities itself. So um, NBS practices, most of them are sustainable. So they do not cut and give education to the communities. And it can also, um, you know, um, help to tackle the unemployment problems in the long run. So yeah, building sustainable discipline jobs with NBS, these are like principles. So for example, there's a lot of cases, especially in my country, about low productivity uh, in agriculture, which leads to rural poverty in an area, especially a remote area of my country. And then it then um, has yeah, returns, uh, low returns and incomes. So um, as a part of nature-based solutions, you know, some NGOs or um, yeah, activities, they restored water catchments and can which can increase water availability and also reduce soil erosion. And um, in order, you know, for this recovery package to be sustainable, the organizations or the individual or whoever conduct this NBS should have these five principles. Because you know, we don't want to spend a lot of money in the beginning, and then after two years, we're going to exit that place, and then um, the issues is rising again. We don't want that, right? So these are the five principles that we need to remember in order to make sure that these packages, sorry, recovery packages that we are um, giving them is going to last. So the first one is that we need to ensure that we want to improve human well-being without harming nature, of course, and also aim for setting the foundations for the transformations of sectors and systems. So it's like, um, what is it? Um, like, understanding more about broader context about the ecosystem itself and also um, use existing institutional arrangement and proven measures like for example i believe every country has their own measures for example maybe the most common ones is ndc or in my country is like long-term um, rural development goals and others kind of measures so we can connect with the goals and it can uh, ensure that it's going to be sustained because it also aligns with the uh, government um, goals. And the fourth, uh, fourth one is adopt multi level and cross sectoral approaches. And last but not least, is that to maximize the creation of decent jobs. 
Um, yeah, I'm not gonna take a lot of time here in the creating jobs opportunities. It's just I want to emphasize on, you know, the very um, high opportunity for green jobs in the future, um, in especially in the uh, younger generation. So um, yeah, um, I research and then the it turns out that green occupations actually paid better. Um, in 2018, before the pandemic, since it got paid $30 per hour compared to $24 um, per hour across all jobs, this is actually happening in the US. And yeah, for example, I took an example for in, in one of the um, sector of green, um, green sectors that renewable energy. So in within 30 years, actually the um, job opportunities is triple up, I mean, yeah, quadruple up um, in 30 years. So, and I believe in every other sectors as well, it's going to be um, more opportunities for people to work in green um, sectors. However, uh, you know, this, these are very big opportunities, but it's it also needs, um, we, we need to provide the supply itself by meaning is that the skills and also the capability of the people that will work in these um, green jobs. And now going to the case study or um, example of the successful NBS projects that supports um, employment and jobs. For example, is that the Great Green Wall in Africa where um, you know they, they create this long um, projects that is three times the size of Great Barrier Reef. So it's an um, 80,000 kilometers, yeah, natural barrier to desertification stretching the entire width of Africa. And um, it's uh, a decade now, um, 10 years in, and it's 15% underway, even though it's a small number, but we can already see the, diff uh, the impacts, the positive impacts that this project has bring. So the initiative is already bringing life back to Africa's degraded landscape and also providing food security for people who live um, around the area and also jobs and a reason to stay since within the area of, of the uh, desert itself, millions of people are um, um, yeah, getting into a mass migration, either it's to Europe or any other continents due to the um, lack of um, employment in the country. And to this project, um, the, the, the transmigration, sorry, the migration rate has been decreased as well. And the second example is also from Africa is a community representation where, um, yeah, it works with 6,000 farmers to help them to improve financial security and also build sustainable livelihoods. And in this um, two impacts, I uh, want to connect with the SDGs that we are talking here. So the first one is decent work and economic growth where you know the project itself, um, this NPS project itself helps to build the overall economy by strengthening business capacity and also increasing marketable foods for the farmers um, and also allowed many farmers to uh, sell a greater range and volume of products to nearby markets. Especially, uh, usually also this kind of projects allow the farmers to sell a uh, more expensive uh, price rather than the normal ones. And also the impacts towards quality education. So this kind of projects, usually they have seminars or workshops, training, or even the um, socialization to school, which help going to give them um, education, for example, about how to develop tree nurseries, conservation techniques, and also the importance of health and hygiene issues, especially during the COVID-19 um, yeah, pandemic. And this is one of the examples that I also find it very quite touching because this is a personal story from one of the beneficiaries of the project, which, um, you know, she has, um, this is Joyce, I believe, yeah, and she used to have a problem of not having enough food for the family, even though she's a farmer herself. And then do, um, yeah, thanks to the farming project itself, the food supply increased, and now she has a surplus to sell, which also helped her economy. And also uh, now she's able to send her children to school and also improve our, uh, her standard of living. 
Um, and last but not least, um, the example of nature-based solutions is from my own organization, Carbonetics. Um, so yeah, we work mainly in marine and coastal ecosystems like uh, mangroves. And one of our projects um, is in Bintan, one in uh, one of the island in Sumatra. And the communities have severely impacted also with climate crisis impacts, which is sea level rise. So there, um, and also extreme weather. So their uh, main livelihoods as fishermen and also, um, yeah, as fishermen have been uh, impacted by these climate crisis impacts. And then um, our organization came into the area and provide them with a sustained um, alternative income yeah, as part of our nature-based solutions um, approach. So we are going to conduct a mangrove um, restoration projects within the island to also help to reduce um, the sea level rise um, impacts while also providing them with a sustained um, alternative income. So we train them, um, sorry, in terms of decent work and economic growth, now they have uh, an increase in income for more than 100% from the baseline. And in terms of quality education, they also have been trained in low carbon planting and also monitoring and also financial literacy and management. So um, it's uh, they, they not necessarily have to work for us only. So now they're also receiving projects for planting and also conservation from other organizations, which yeah, it, it proves on how these um, methods can help to sustain their um, income and the livelihoods. And also other projects uh, of us rather than uh, restoration is that we also create West Bank um, development and also women empowerment in creating mangrove based products. So yeah, basically it's not only helping them to have an alternative income that they are most likely losing their job because of the climate crisis impacts, but we also provide them with the education they need, the skills, the capacity for them to also um uh, you know still still fight within this um era yeah of the pandemic COVID-19 and last um but at least this is a connection between creating jobs and quality education well myself also of a, of a very keen interest in education so yeah it's very interconnected where you know as I already mentioned before, we have a very big opportunity in the future for green jobs, but we also need to prepare and equip people for uh, sustainable employment. So yeah, the three key actions that we can take is that knowledge enhancement, we can update our curriculum, you know, based on the latest updates, news, policies and everything. So then, um, youth especially can keep up to date and when the time they graduate they can keep up with the trends and also the second actions that we can take is that skills and competency development both for the teachers or trainers and also for the students and also last but not least is that job opportunities which i believe also government um, plays a very big role here which um to you know ensure that the graduates here have the opportunity to work so it matches between the supply and the demand in terms of job opportunities within the green job sector. Um, yeah, uh, so thank you everyone again. Uh, it's happy for, I'm very happy to share this with you. And maybe this is a little, you know, closing statement from my end. I also agree with Julia and Morris on how every single things matter. So I, I love, you know, um, when people say that start with imperfection because you'll, you'll um, I mean, most of my friends, when I discuss with them about sustainability, they're going to think like, ah, oh, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. And then I'm going to say then start with imperfection, start with the smallest thing that you can do and it can, you know, it can last and also still impact the world. And also the second um, closing statement that I'm going to share is that um, I believe that every single one of us um, has uh, the background of individual or also the organization that we're working in um, we have our own power and privilege so i believe it's important for us to reconcile at the power and uh, privilege that we have and you know then we are gonna aware of the scope that we can work on and then let's just um step up for the climate action together so uh, by working with um cross uh sector yeah so by working with communities organizations at governments 
Thank you so much, um, everyone. And yeah, I'm hoping you can also visit our organization's website in carbonatics.org. And we also want to encourage the participants to take pledge in our website. So yeah, um, start with imperfections. For example, we, um, for example, um, start reducing the consumption of plastic or start um, by walking to work or etc. So yeah, you can take the pledge and visit our website there. Thank you so much.